Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 97 of my podcast. We're almost at 100. Thank you so much for being here today. It is a really bright and sunny and beautiful Friday in April here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. If you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. You can find the show notes for this episode in the description box below. Gotta go let the cat out. Be right back. Okay, the cat's gone. I have to record with the door closed right now because Colin, my husband, is home, working from home. So he is right out there and it's really nerve-wracking and I don't like it. But anyway, cat's gone now, so hopefully we're good. Um, I am also recording in a new location. I'm still in the same room. I'm just up against a different wall. I thought it would be fun to have a little bit of a change of pace. I've been spending, well, I spent one afternoon kind of reorganizing this room and uh, the garage a little bit. And I'll actually talk about that a little later because it has to do with Moonstone Dye Works, which is my uh, hand dyed yarn shop. So there will be a shop update later on in the episode and I'll tell you what I've been doing. It's been really great. I've been having a really good time. So let's get into the episode with what I'm wearing. Also my first finished object. So I finished the spiral sweater, which is a sweater pattern by Regina Weiss. It's a crochet pattern. I crocheted my very first sweater. I'm very happy and I'm very proud of myself. And I also think I kind of got this whole sweater crochet bug because there are a bunch more crochet sweaters I want to make now. But anyway, let's talk about this one. Uh, so this sweater is a big spiral and it has uh, holes for the arms. So you work the arms down and it's great. I knit it. I'm sorry. I knew I was going to do that. I crocheted it out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Long John's colorway. And I had seven skeins of this and I used exactly six full skeins. I have one skein left over and I used the entirety of my last sixth skein when I was making this. Um, and you want to know what I used it on? I'll show you. The fringe. So, here, let's... New location, new setup, how am I gonna do this? Okay, so here it is, the spiral sweater. As you can see, it is crochet. These are all double crochets. And it's got this really cool collar. It's an open cardigan, except it has these ties, and you're kind of meant to do a wraparound thing, which I don't actually think I'm gonna do. I'm not really into it. But, so for me, it just lays kind of open, and here, is the bottom part. Here's the back. And as you can see, I'm very fringy. Uh, there were supposed to be picos on the arm or on these sleeves, but I left those out. And okay, that's it. I'm gonna give you one more twirl and then I'm gonna sit down. Okay, so this thing is, um, like I said before, a big circle. So you start at the center and you crochet just rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds, increasing as you go. And uh, you end up with a big circle. And the collar, once you get to a certain point, the collar, so the top half of the circle is worked a little bit differently than the bottom half of the circle. So you get this kind of differentiated collar. Um, I made the smallest size and then decided that I wanted it bigger. So I crocheted to the end of the smallest sizes pattern instructions, blocked it, tried it on, it didn't have sleeves yet. And um, I thought it was too short, too small. So I added probably, I wanna say four or five rounds to the whole thing which I think essentially made it about that much longer at the bottom. And it also made the collar a little bit deeper and the collar isn't that deep as it is. So I'm really glad I did that. Um, I do wish I would have made the next size up in general because the other thing that's affected by the size are the, is the armhole size. Um, and the armholes, 
I wish they were a tiny bit bigger. They're not too tight or anything and they are completely comfortable. But um, if they were like one or two stitches bigger, I think I'd be a little bit happier. But what I did is, so you crochet the whole thing, you have these two holes left for the sleeves and you pretty much just pick up and crochet around and then you're crocheting a tube for the whole sleeve. Um, and there's not meant to be any decreases in the sleeves, but what I did is I picked up, I think two, uh, two more stitches than it wanted me to. And then I just decreased those two stitches like right about here. So I tried to give myself a little extra room in the actual armhole area. And uh, I don't know if that really did anything or not, but I'm glad I did it. And it fits pretty well. As I was kind of finishing working on this thing, I started getting a little worried that I wasn't liking it and that it just fit weird and it didn't feel right. But after it was totally completed, um, oh, I also lengthened the sleeves. So I initially crocheted the sleeves to pattern and it tells you like exactly how many rounds to do. I did that and I blocked it and it was probably to here. And I also did the Pico edging that it called for and it was just way too short, especially for how wide the sleeves are. It was like way too short for me. So I ripped out the Pico edging and I added probably also four or five rounds and I left out the Pico edging. Um, initially, I think I really left it out because I didn't feel like doing it, but I also just like the straight edge better. So I'm glad I left that out. And so after I did that, I blocked it. A really amazing thing about this sweater is that there's like no finishing. Once you're done, you're just done. And, uh, after I blocked it and I, then I put all the fringe on. Um, so the fringe was really great. Uh, you, you just kind of crochet it. There's picots all along the whole edging of the bottom. You have to forgive my lighting stitch because since I'm in a new spot, I'm also experimenting with how lighting works right here and it's a little funky. But anyway, so there's picots along the whole edge and um, the pattern calls for you to in every third pico to do a tap a fringe thing. Uh, so I did that and I thought it looked kind of sparse. So I added one in to the middle. Of, so now it's every other Pico has a uh, fringe on it and I really like that. Um, so after I put all the fringe on, I blocked the whole thing and I put it on and I'm super happy with it. Uh, I think it fits really well. I think it looks really cool. I think it feels really good. One of my initial regrets when I was starting to come to a finish on this sweater was maybe I shouldn't have used Brooklyn Tweed. Like, Brooklyn Tweed in sweaters, in my experience, like feels really good and really drapey and nice when you first block it. But then after you wear it for, I don't know, an hour, it kind of starts to like, the memory starts coming back to it and it starts getting a little, like less drapey. It's a little, stiff is the wrong word, but it's, it just has a lot of that memory. Um, and I started feeling like maybe it was the wrong choice for the sweater, like something like a little heavier and drapier would have been good for this kind of shape. But, um, I don't feel that way anymore. Now, after wearing it, um, for a little while with a few different outfits, I feel really good about it. I think I made the right choice. I love everything about this sweater. I feel really cool in it. I feel really cool that I crocheted a sweater. And it is also, what is this? I found this on my sleeve, so I guess that's just an end. I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm super happy with it. Um, it was not difficult to do at all. Like I said, this is my first crochet sweater, and I have some, but not a whole lot of crochet experience outside before this sweater. And the pattern was very, very easy to follow along with for me. Um, I think I understood everything just fine, and it was great. I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked making it. I kind of worked obsessively on the sweater until it was done. There was like no point in the sweater where I felt like I was in any kind of abyss. You know what I mean? Um, doing the sleeves in crochet was a little more annoying than knitting sleeves. I don't know why. Small, so small circumference crochet with a big thing attached to it was, you know, about as not fun as you might think, but the nice thing about them is that they went by really fast. Crocheting sleeves is way faster than knitting sleeves, like way faster. 
Um, so I used a size six millimeter hook for this sweater, which is what is called for in the pattern. And I used an old like boy aluminum hook, which I mentioned in the last episode, I thought I was gonna really dislike it. Uh, and I thought I was just gonna buy a six millimeter hook so I could use one because I really like the tulip hooks. Uh, but I never, I never found myself disliking it. So that's cool because I have a bunch of those old aluminum boy hooks lying around. I definitely did not swatch for this sweater. Uh, I didn't, I think I just didn't feel like uh, messing around with a brand new way to swatch. So I just didn't do it. And I think I used yarn that was slightly uh, lighter in weight than what the pattern called for. It calls for an Aran and I used Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which uh, I think is more of a worsted than an Aran. Uh, so I would be willing to bet my gauge is smaller than the pattern calls for. But, and I, what I wanted to do was actually check the gauge just on my finished sweater and compare that to the pattern, but I haven't. Okay, I think that's better. I feel like my lights were way too close to my face, so I just adjusted a little bit. I think it looks better now. Okay, so anyway, that's my sweater, and I love it. I'm like super in love with it. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Do you crochet sweaters? Do you have a crochet sweater pattern that you really love that you think I should check into? Let me know. Tell me about it. Here's the uh, upper back one more time. <laughs> So my next finished object is the February hat by Ganyan Osborne, and it's uh, a hat from the Year of Hats collection, which was put out by Kelborn Woolens, and it's 12 free hat patterns. And they have all been designed in this yarn, which is Kelborn Woolens Germantown. And this is my finished hat. I used the rhododendron colorway in the Germantown yarn. Uh, I had one skein, and this is what I have left over. So I pretty much used almost the whole thing, which I love. And it's a worsted weight, 100% non-superwash wool yarn, I believe. Uh, it's a really great yarn. I really liked working with it. And I really love this hat. So the hat has a double brim that's folded over. So this is double thick and it's one by one ribbing. I really like that. That's the first time I've done that and I really liked it. Um, and the way that you start the pattern is with a provisional cast on so that you can fold, knit it double length and then fold it over and then kind of knit the provisional cast on in with the beginning of your hat. Uh, I have done many provisional cast ons and I don't know what I did with this one, <laughs> but I did a crochet provisional cast on where you use a crochet hook and you um, crochet around your knitting needle. And somehow, I made it to where when I went to like undo it, it didn't just go and undo it. Like I had to actually unpick every single one as I put it back on the needle. So that was a bummer. That took like two evenings worth of work. Um, and I have a feeling what you're supposed to do with provisional cast ons is do the provisional cast on and then knit a row and then start your pattern. But I just started my pattern, which was knit one purl one. So I have a feeling that might have been my mistake. I don't really know, but it's over now. It's okay. <laughs> but I do really like uh, the double brim. And this hat is just a bunch of different textures all the way up with pom-pom at the end. It only came in one size um, and I have a pretty small head. So that was a little worrisome to me, but I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna do it. And it fits really great. I love it. Um, so. This is what it looks like. It's really nice and snug. It's really nice and warm over the ears, which kind of, as opposed to a lot of other mid-handed hats I have, it isn't that warm over the ears because it's just the single layer of one by one ribbing usually. And so this is really great. I'm really digging it. So here's the hat tour. Here's my pom-pom. Um, yeah, I'm super into this hat. I like it a lot. I really want to make some more hats from that collection. In the collection, every hat pattern is done by a different di pattern designer. And uh, I think the next one I want to do, uh, one of you mentioned in my last episode that you had done the April hat, and I really like the April hat. I'm pretty sure the April hat is the one with the baubles. It kind of looks 
almost like beret like I think and it's got bobbles all over it it's really cool I think I might do that one next I'm not sure if I'll get more of this yarn or just use some other worsted weight yarn for my stash but we'll see but yeah this was a really nice quick and fun and simple knit um, I can't remember what needle size I used. I think it might have been a four and a six possibly it was whatever it was called for in the pattern it did feel pretty tight like as I was knitting this it felt like pretty tight and dense, you know, on my hands, but it wasn't that bad. And I think that a lot of that had to do with all the texture. It was a lot of knitting and purling back and forth and slipping stitches, but I really love the hat. So it's a really cool collection because they're all free, worsted weight hat patterns. And my pom-pom I made using my, what you call it? My loom, it's L-O-O-M-E. It's a wooden little tool and it's for making pom-poms and tassels. And uh, that's what I used. It was great. I'm really bad at making pom-poms. I like even watched like a video on pom-pom making. I'm not that good at making pom-poms. I mean, my pom-pom's fine. It's a fine pom-pom. But it's just like, like, look at that. You know, it's messy. It's a little messy. I watched some people make, I think Hellborn Woolens has a tutorial about pom -pom. No, Loom has a tutorial about making pom-poms. And the pom-poms that they make in that tutorial are like, they look like little rocks. They're so perfect. <laughs> Mine does not look like that. But I like it, I like how big it is, it's cute, it's cool. Um, I just secured it in the inside. I like, I left a long tail when I cast off at the top of the hat. And then I left, a, I tied around a long tail on the end of the pom-pom and I used those two to just kind of tie like a bow underneath. Because I haven't, like I initially blocked this before I put the pom-pom on, um, but I like to re-block my hats pretty not frequently, but sometimes, you know, I'd like to wash them and stuff. So I'm not sure. I've never soaked anything with a pom-pom before. So I might remove the pom-pom before I wash it next. We'll see. But there's my beautiful hat. I love it very much. Okay. Okay, on to works in progress. My first whip is from Rumpelstiltskin Yarn, which is an LYS in Sacramento. I signed up for their quarantine mystery kit and they sent me some yarn and a pattern and that is what I have cast on. So the pattern is the Star Stranded Cowl by Jacqueline Sislak and the yarn that they sent me is this. Very pretty. I love it. So this is Spin Cycle Dream State in the Cataclysm colorway. And this is the Worsted Weight Spin Cycle. And this is Clinton Co. Owl in the Canyon colorway. And um, Spin Cycle's wool and the Clinton Co. is wool and alpaca. And that's a Worsted Weight too. And here's what I have so far. So it's a really pretty colorwork cowl. And it's got like this really cool kind of art deco pattern up the whole thing. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm knitting it on a size US 7, which is what the pattern calls for. And it's gone by really like quickly and mindlessly. And it's just really, really fun. It's exactly the kind of color work pattern I really enjoy. It's like the gauge is a little bit looser. It's not like mitten or sock gauge where it's a little on the tighter side and it's not such a small circumference. I don't know, for some reason those two things kind of make a difference for me with color work knitting. I really like it. There's no magic loop. It's awesome. I'm really, really loving it. So all of this grain here is the Spin Cycle and then the pink is the Quince & Co. Obviously. <laughs> um, but I'm really liking how it's working up. I've never used Spin Cycle before. This is my first Spin Cycle project, so that's pretty exciting. And it's a really beautiful yarn. Both of these yarns are really beautiful. I've also never used um, Owl, which is the Quince & Co. base. I'm really digging them together. It's so good. It's so good. This has been really fun to work on. So that is my, that is it for the knitting stuff. My last work in progress is a crochet work in progress. I'm just like super into crochet right now. It is so much fun. Have you tried it? Is it is it your main thing? I don't know. It's probably some of your main things. I don't know. It's so fun. So uh, this project is living in my Katie Did project bag. 
And I am working on the Just Feel Festive shawl, which is a shawl pattern by Kalisha Ryan from the Courtney Monday Craft Cast. And check it out. Here's what I have so far. Isn't this a crazy bright? I love it. So this is a granny stripe crochet shawl. It's like a really wide rectangular shawl, like a wrap. And it's um, crocheted on the bias, which I'm super into. So one end is slanted. <laughs> and then it goes across and the other end is slanted as well. So pretty much you're working on it side to side. So you're working on it like this. One end you're always increasing, one end you're always decreasing. And so hence the bias. I really like it. It's a scrappy project for me. Um, the pattern is written, you can do whatever you want, but the pattern is written for holding two fingering weight yarns, held to, holding two fingering weight yarns together and in knitting it at a DK gauge. The hook that she calls for, which is what I'm using, is a five millimeter and this is a tulip hook. This is my favorite kind of crochet hook. I love these hooks. Um, and I did buy that one specifically for this project because I didn't have a five millimeter hook in any kind of hook. And uh, so I figured I'd use it as an opportunity to buy a new tulip hook. And I love it. So like I said, I'm using scraps and I'm just kind of going through and I'm marling them is pretty much what I'm doing. And I'm picking two scraps to go together, crocheting them together for a little while, dropping one, picking up a new one and doing that whole, you know, you know all about marling, right? So this is my favorite section. I feel like this beginning section is the most me. And then I start to get a little out of hand. I start to get kind of dark. And then I start to get kind of bright. And then I get really bright. <laughs> and I'm starting to tone it down a little bit over here. <laughs> so it's very rainbowy. Actually, like, oops, sorry, I kicked you. Um, I kind of think it's cool how it's coming out because it looks like kind of like subdued gray, subdued gray with just like one rainbow stripe. Maybe I'll keep it like that. That's a pretty good idea. Maybe I'll keep the rest of it subdued, like in like grays and like muted colors. And that way the whole thing's kind of grayish with just this one rainbow stripe. That's a good idea. I don't know. I haven't really like, I didn't do any color planning. I'm just kind of grabbing stuff as I feel like it. Um, so there's a lot of different yarn in here and it's going to be hard to tell you which is which because they're all marled together, but I'll just kind of take you on a slow little tour. We've got some Moonstone Dye Works. We have got some Cat Sandwich Fibers. We have got some, um, Dyer Bear Yarns, which I'm not sure if she dyes anymore. Um, we've got some Jill Draper Make Stuff. We've got, um, I think this hot green is... No, that's wrong. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the hot green is, but I really like it. I've been saving it for something special. We've got some Julie Spins. We've got some Knit Picks. That bright pink is Knit Picks. Um, right here, I thought I was pretty clever, and I added in some Mohair Silk Lace Weight as one of my strands. So, um, the Mohair Silk is held together with the pink right here. It's uh, Moonstone Dye Works in the Gemini colorway, and then it goes right into here, held with like a pink yarn, and then um, right now I'm working with some Moonstone Dye Works. This last stripe, the one I'm currently on, is uh, Ursula held together with Crescent Moon. And then right here is Venus. So it's just a lot of fingering weight scraps, which, you know, I love me a fingering weight scrappy project. So. I'm really excited about this. This is so much fun. I love it. Um, and I used a tutorial to figure out how to do this because as I said earlier, I am uh, a pretty inexperienced crocheteist. So I used uh, a tutorial by my friend Zelda who has the YouTube channel NRJ3. And Zelda NRJ3. I'm gonna link it below. There's a lot of numbers and letters in it, you know? But Zelda is awesome. And she did a really great tutorial for this pattern that I referenced when I first cast it on and I also referenced it again just a couple days ago to kind of refresh my memory because I had put it down for about a week. So that's really awesome. Yeah, and I have some yarn in here. 
So these are the ones I'm working on right now. This is the Ursula and the Crescent Moon. They're both in my single ply base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. I've got this coming up pretty soon. This is some Cascade sock yarn, I think. I made a pair of socks with this a very long time ago. This is something from my scrap stash. I'm not sure. I think it's like Sunshine Yarns or something. I can't remember. It's very old. So, yeah. I love it. I love it very much. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is something that I did. If you recall, I did a vlog video going over sweaters and tops that needed either altering or to be frogged. Uh, and I've done one of the things. I went back to my Flora Cardi, which needed an over dye. So this is the Flora Cardi. I knit this last year probably, and this is a pattern by Carrie Bostic Hogue. Uh, it was knit out of Sincere Sheep Linen Silk Blend. It's a fingering, no, it's a lace weight yarn. Um, yes, it's from Making Magazine, the pattern is. And when I uh, bought this yarn, it was a very light, kind of seafoam greeny blue. And while I love the color, I, I, after I knitted it up and wore it, I felt like it just didn't work with me. I didn't like the color on me. So I decided I wanted to try to make it darker. Um, so I tried over dyeing it using acid dyes, which are the types of dye that I use to dye wool yarn in, for my shop. Um, and so what I did, and I don't know anything about dyeing linen um, or silk for that matter. I mean, I have never actually offered silk yarns in my shop, but uh, it is not uncommon to use acid dyes on silk and wool blend yarns. Um, but silk and linen, I wasn't quite sure how my dyes would take to it, but I just thought I'd give it a shot. So I did. And here is what the cardigan looks like on over an outfit that it doesn't really go with at all. <laughs> um, so just so you know, that's what the cardigan looks like. It's a really cute, like just kind of light and airy drapey little short sleeve cardigan and it's got a lace panel right here. Um, so what I did is I put it in the pot and I just put some black dye in it. I didn't even measure. I just put black in it <laughs> and it sucked it all up. Um, so I put some more in it and it sucked it all up. It took the black color very slowly, like very slowly. Like I kept adding more dye that I, than I thought I was going to add and it kept drinking it up um, and it only incrementally got darker. And so I'm pretty sure what's happening is the silk is getting dyed and the linen isn't. But like I said, I don't know. Um, so it's a little different, but not too different. Uh, I think I might go at it again. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It's a little better. I feel like I see a little bit of a difference and it's a little darker. It's a little dingier, like looking in color, which I like better than the like really springy, like light, bright seafoam green that it was. It goes better with me. So I'm a, I'm a dingier person than a springy person. Anyway. So that's what I did. And I like it okay so far, but it's not enough of a difference to me. So I don't know if I'm going to try to dye it again with acid dyes, just with more color to see if I can get it a deeper, darker color. Uh, maybe with some greens. I, oh, I also threw in some like, um, some green to try to get it to go more on the like olive end of green rather than the seafoam end of green. But I don't know. I might also try to uh, purchase some dyes that work better with linen. I don't know. We'll see. I also want to, I mean, I have some other dresses, like just commercial dresses that are just um, synthetic fibers. And I would like to try to dye those as well. I have one that's like a buttercup yellow. And I'm like, I'm not, I love the dress, but I don't wearing buttercup yellow and a whole dress just doesn't work for me so I want to over dye that as well so I might try to buy some other types of dyes that would work better for this kind of stuff so that was that little project and it was fun I'm glad I did it okay 
that is everything for what I've been making and doing in that regard. I have been dyeing yarn though, so I am the dyer behind Moonstone Dye Works. The shop is linked below. And uh, since we have been under this shelter in place ordinance, we have all been home. My husband Colin's been working from home. Lucy has been staying home rather than um, going to her grandparents' house, which she used to do a few days a week. And I have been staying home from my day job. Um, and that hasn't really allowed me any more time to work for Moonstone Dye Works because I personally don't like to dye yarn with Lucy in the house. It just, it doesn't work for me or for the way she interacts with me. There's just no way I could see how it would work. So I haven't been dyeing. I, I took like three weeks off of dyeing yarn and I was getting kind of antsy and I really wanted to keep dyeing. So what I've done is I moved my whole setup into my garage. Uh, I used to dye in my kitchen and that worked great for me for a while. Uh, and my garage has been in a horrible disarray for years. <laughs> Pretty much since we had Lucy, it's just been like a, uh, a big dumping ground for stuff that we can't deal with right now. So um, one day, since this whole staying home thing happened, me and Colin just kind of buckled down and we like spent just the afternoon doing the garage. And so we cleaned it all up. We, it didn't even take like getting rid of much stuff. It just took organizing. So we did a lot of organizing. We cleared out, there's like actually space to move around in there now. And we have like a table in there. So now the garage was like a space where I could possibly want to do my work. Um, so I just kind of figured out a way to make it happen. There's a table in there. I actually sewed, uh, it used to be our dining room table and now it's our garage table. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, back when it was our dining room table, I sewed a cover for it. So it's it's a oil cloth tablecloth, and it's just a big circle of oil cloth that I sewed elastic around the edge of. So it just kind of shoo, like shoo, <laughs> under the edges of it. Um, and we don't use it anymore, but we still had it. Uh, so I use that. I just clear off the table. It's where also Colin does a lot of his work from home stuff right now. So we'll clear off all of his stuff. I put this oil cloth cover on the table and I set up my dye stuff there. I have two double burners, so I dye four pots of yarn at a time and it fits great on the little table. And uh, I've just moved all of my equipment out there and it's really great because that has also cleared up a lot of space in the office. So that's why I've also done some rearranging in here and I just like everything a lot better. And I really enjoy dyeing in the garage now. Like it's not, you know, it's not like a nice studio setup or anything, but it works really well for me and it's really nice to not have to break down the whole kitchen, set up my dye stuff, and then redo the whole kitchen every time I dye. Um, it's, now it's just setting up dye stuff and breaking down dye stuff. It's really great. So I have been dyeing some yarn and I uh, have put it up in the shop. By the time this gets uploaded to YouTube and you are watching it, this yarn will be in the shop. So if you're interested in any of it, please do go check it out. There's a link in the description box below. And I'm gonna grab it. So I have died on my last reserve stock of Natural Merino. So Natural Merino is a Moonstone Dye Works base, which is a fingering weight, non-superwash, 100% Falkland organic merino yarn. And um, the producer that I use for it, or the mill that I use for it, is pretty small and they their updates for this yarn being available for wholesale was very infrequent and pretty small and so it's pretty hard to get and I haven't been able to get it in a long time and I had a small reserve left of undyed of the undyed base and I decided to go ahead and dye the rest of it up and move on. <laughs> So I'm still keeping an eye on um, that mill to see if it ever comes back, but I am currently on a search for some new non-superwash because I really like having non-superwash available in my shop, but my current base is just hard to get. So I'm looking for a new non-superwash base, but for now, here is the last of my old non-superwash base. So this is Natural Merino. And this is what I've got. I came up with two new colorways specifically for the last of the stock. Um, oh, and I forgot, I actually haven't named these yet. <laughs> I'll come up with some good, clever names for them. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Um, but this one is like a grayish purple. And this one 
is a grayish green. So I'm gonna have both of these just on that base available. And I don't know why, but I was super inspired to go back to one of my original colorways, one of my old school, very first Moonstone Diaryx colorways, and that is Moon Age Daydream. So I dyed up a bunch more of this. So this is gonna be available in the shop. I love this colorway. I knit myself a pair of knee-high socks out of this. And I dyed up some hard cider. And last, I came up with a, another brand new colorway, and I'm thinking this one's gonna be a shop regular because I really like it. Uh, this is Android's Dream, right? What is up with that? That's bright. I decided to go bright. I wanted to do something really bright. I wanted to do something really shiny. I was in the garage. It's kind of dark in there. I needed some sunshine. So I dyed Android's Dream. And it's like, it's like a bright peachy orange. And so this is the uh, single merino single space and this is the mohair silk lace weight base. And that will be in the shop as well. And that is it. Those are all the colorways that are gonna be added to the shop uh, today. So by the time you see this, like I said, it'll be available. I'm also gonna put it up on Instagram as soon as I get it up in the shop. And I hope if you're interested in any of it, you can make it and uh, Get some yarn. Okay, okay. Uh, I think that's gonna be it. I have nothing for favorites. I don't know, what have been your favorites lately? Are you staying home? Are you uh, binging something? What is keeping you entertained right now? I would love to know. Because I could use some suggestions too. Okay, I will say I have one thing that I haven't actually watched, but I think is really cool, and I plan on watching it. So the Globe Theater, which I don't know where it is because, I don't know, I don't know where it is, but it's somewhere in Europe, right? It's Shakespeare's Theater. <laughs> is it in England? <sighs> so the theater where they do all the Shakespeare productions, uh, The Globe, has a YouTube channel and they have been releasing uh, old recordings of full productions of their plays. Uh, so the first one that they released, I think, was Romeo and Juliet. They did... Uh, Hamlet and they either have just released or are soon releasing Macbeth and I I'm really excited about them. Uh, I have You know like a lot of people I read Shakespeare in high school and stuff and in college and I think it's I think it would be really neat to see an actual Shakespearean production of a Shakespeare play like I've never seen one and I'm really excited about watching Macbeth. I read Macbeth when I was in eighth grade <laughs> And I actually played, uh, we did like little snippets of um, just like scenes, you know, acted out to the rest of the class. We got in little groups and I played Lady Macbeth and I did her like, there's blood on my hands scene. And that always stuck with me. It like gave me a sh very short lived passion for theater. Well, for acting. I still love theater. But so I'm really excited to watch Macbeth. Hamlet I've never read or seen or I've no, I, I've never done anything with Hamlet. So I'm really excited about that one too. Um, Romeo and Juliet, sure, but, you know, I I feel like uh, many people, I've been a little overloaded on Romeo and Juliet. Like, I feel like that's the one Shakespeare play where you've at least seen the Claire Danes movie, right? Because that's really good. So, I don't know, check that out. They're also releasing these little short videos where uh, famous people are reading Shakespearean sonnets, and one of them was, oh, what's his name? Ooh. From Jeeves and Wooster. Anyway, he's famous and everybody loves him, including me. I just can't remember his name right now. But uh, his name will be here. He read one of the sonnets and I watched that one and it was really cool. So, I don't know, check that out. I think it's really neat that a lot of people, a lot of organizations are putting out free content like that in terms of entertainment and like things to watch and things to do and like you know there's aquariums and stuff that are offering free tours and stuff like that i did a live stream for the monterey bay aquarium a little while ago i just kind of checked it out i did like the penguin live stream where you could just see what the penguins were up to that was fun oh also okay yeah so it's 
see, give me a minute and I'm just gonna keep talking. So I bought a sewing pattern. I can't believe I forgot about that. I was inspired by Jillian of the Good Witch Knits podcast. She made some of these skirts. It is the So Liberated pattern called, I don't know, I'm gonna put it on the screen, but it's a skirt. <laughs> And it's got an elastic waistband, which I've never been that interested in, but I think I'm getting more and more interested in it. I was inspired by hers because it seemed really cool. And also I'm just like, you know, my uh, waist is a little squishier than it used to be. So I feel like maybe elastic might be kind of nice. I don't know. I actually, what I really want is like something with a, with a flat structured front waistband and an elastic back, especially because I feel like elastic adds like bunching of fabric, right? It adds additional fabric. And I don't know, like I'd rather have flat fabric in the front and bunching in the back. Does that make sense? I can add to my butt, but I don't want to add to the front. <laughs> but anyway, um, I had fabric in my stash for that. I printed out the pattern. I cut it out. I cut out the fabric. It's all waiting for me to sew it, but it's just hard for me to sew right now with Lucy because if I try to sew with her around, she'll just be like, what are you doing? So. I haven't sewn it yet, uh, but I did need some like really thick elastic for the waistband. So uh, my local fabric shop, which is called Fabric Temptations, is open for like curbside pickup. So luckily they had it. So I got some elastic from them. So I am all ready to go. I just need to sew it together. And hopefully I can do that soon and show you at the next episode when I have a new skirt. Also, if you know of a sewing pattern that has, that is a skirt like that, where it's elastic in the back and just, regular waistband on the front, let me know because I would be interested in that. Okay, I am going to leave it at that. I hope you are having such a good day today and thank you for joining me. If you like the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, check out the shop if you're interested in any of that yarn. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I love you so much. You are amazing. Uh, if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, there is a link in the show notes below and there are a bunch of fun things that go along with that that you can possibly be interested in. So check it out if you want to, but don't if you don't want to. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye.